All right, so let's take a look at, this is part two now. We're going to continue with our examples. Uh, we just finished number one, so let's take a look at number two. Triangle JKL with J, points J, K, and L. List the angles greatest to least. Well, the first thing we want to do is take a look at this. So to take a look at it, we're going to draw uh, a coordinate plane. If you have graph paper, you can go ahead and use that. I'm just going to draw an x-axis and a y-axis. There's my y-axis. There's my x-axis. Not great, but it'll work. And I'm going to go from 1 to 4 when I number this. Okay, so 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4. All right. And I know that that's all I need because when I look at the ordered pairs, when I look at points J, K, and L, the biggest value is 4, the smallest value is negative 4. All right, so let's plot points. J is negative 4, 2. So that means I go negative 4 for X, positive 2 for Y. So there's J, and I'm going to write 4, 2. Negative 4, 2, excuse me. K is 4, 3, so that means we go right 4, it's positive, and then up 3 is positive, so there's K, 4, 3, and then L is 1, negative 3, so right 1, down 3, there's L, 1, negative 3, let's go ahead and connect it. Alright, there's our picture. Now let's see, what are they asking us to do? They say list the angles greatest to least. Greatest to least. Well, if you want to compare angles, you first have to know something about the side lengths. You gotta know something about the distances. You might be able to eyeball this and see you know, which angle's bigger, which angle's smaller, but to be honest with you, this picture, they all look very, very similar, very close. Um, so I do not want to eyeball that. I need to figure out for a fact. To do that, what we have to do is find the distances. So we're going to use one of our favorite formulas. We're going to use the distance formula. Okay, I'm going to write it up here. D equals square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now when you do this, you've just got to be real careful. This is actually good practice for you. If we do the distance of JK, okay, we'll start with that. So I'm going to say D, and then in small letters, I'm going to put segment JK, just so I keep track of what numbers I'm using. Now I need to subtract the X's first. So I'm going to say here's my X1, Y1. Here's my x2, y2. I'm going to do x2 minus x1. This is 4 minus, now this value is a negative 4, so I have to put a negative 4 there, squared, plus the y value is 3 and minus 2, squared. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this. That gives us 4 minus negative 4. Minus a minus, both become pluses. So that's 8 squared plus 1 squared. Now that's 64, 8 times 8. It's not 8 times 2, it's 8 times 8. 64 plus 1, we get the square root of 65. Okay, now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that on my picture here. So that's square root 65. Could I type that on the calculator and get a decimal? Of course I could. But I'm going to keep it like that and you'll see why in a moment. Um, so that's for JK. Now we also need to find JL, so the distance of JL. What you can do, I encourage you to stop the video right now. You go ahead and calculate JL and KL. Use the distance formula. This will be really good practice. And then uh, hit unpause or hit play and see if you get the same thing I get. Okay, now I'm going to work through this here. I'm going to subtract my X's again. I'm going to do 1 minus negative 4 squared plus, that's a negative 3, subtract 2. Everything is in distance formula. You are subtracting your coordinates, whether they're positives or negatives. 
So what we get is square root. Minus minus is plus, so that's 5 squared plus. This is negative 5 squared. All right, you got to be careful, and I know we've talked about this before. When you square a negative, if you use the calculator, that's okay. You can use it, but you better make sure you put that negative 5 in parentheses because you are squaring negative 5. You're not squaring 5 and then taking the opposite. So that gives me a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. So what we get there, this is really 25. 5 squared is 25. Negative 5 squared is 25. Add them up, we get square root of 50. Okay, so there's the second. JL is square root 50. Okay, and then we'll go through one more time here, and we'll do KL. You'll notice this takes some time. So to do this problem, get it right the first time. Don't rush through your calculations. Don't write down numbers wrong. Don't forget positives and negatives. We're going to subtract the x's. 4 minus 1 squared plus 3. That's minus negative 3 for my y values. And so that gives us, we get 3 squared plus Minus minus is positive. 3 plus 3 is 6 squared. That's 9 plus 36, which is square root of 45. All right, so we got square root 45. Okay, now, when I look at my picture, they said list the angles, and they said greatest to least. So what I need to do is match this up. If I look at the sides, we have square root 65. That's the biggest. It's the biggest number then square root 50, then square root 45. So we're going greatest to least. The greatest angle is opposite the greatest side. The greatest side is JK. So JK, those are the vertices of that segment. That means the other point, L, is opposite JK. So angle L is the biggest. Then the middle side was the square root 50. That's JL. That uses points J and L. The opposite angle is K. And then the smallest angle is opposite the shortest side, which was KL. And that would be angle J. Okay, so angle L is greatest, middle, least. There we go. So you'll see these problems take you some time. Get them right the first time. Don't rush through it. Don't skip steps. And don't guess. Guessing is not going to help you. Okay, now we'll do one more here. Flip this on the back. Let's take a look at number three. All right, now this time, they say list the sides of triangle ABC shortest to longest, if the measure of angle A is 9x plus 29, the measure of angle B is 93 minus 5x, and the measure of angle C is 10x plus 2. Now we're going to draw a triangle, but we're not going to use a coordinate plane because these are not points. These are, these are different values. So A, B, and C Angle A is 9x plus 29. Now I'm going to put a degree symbol there because even though they don't have one included, it says measure angle A, so that's degrees. Measure of angle B is 93 minus 5x. Measure of angle C is 10x plus 2. Now they're asking you to list the sides in order. Well, these are angle measures. So how do we figure out which side is shortest, which side is longest? We need to figure out the angle measures first. Now, based on this, you can't tell which one of these is biggest and which one is smallest. But think about this. What do you know about all the angles of a triangle? What do they always add up to, the interior angles? The answer is they add up to 180. So we're going to make an equation. We're going to say 9x plus 29 plus 93 minus 5x plus 10x plus 2 
equals 180. That's always, always true. All right, now, before we start to, to move stuff, let's combine. Okay, let's combine like terms. So 9x minus 5x plus 10x. 9 minus 5 is 4 plus 10x. That's 14x. And then we got positive 29 plus 93 plus 2. So 29 plus 93 is uh, 122, plus 2 is 124, equals 180. Okay, now let's keep going here. We're going to subtract 124 from both sides. That gives us 14x equals 56. Divide by 14, x is 4. All right, now, before we congratulate ourselves... Did we answer the question? They said, list the sides shortest to longest. X is not a side. Okay, what we got to do here, well, let's plug this back in. Let's take our answer here. Plug it in for X, and let's figure out the angles. Okay, so the 9X plus 29 is 9 times 4 plus 29. So 36 plus 29 that's going to be 65 degrees. So this is 65. And then we've got 93 minus 5 times 4. Okay, and it's fine if you're using a calculator for this. 93 minus 5 times 4 is 73. So angle B is 73 degrees. And then 10 times 4 is 40, plus 2 is 42 degrees. Now one thing I can do, just to check, let me add those up. 42 plus 65 plus 73 should give me 180, and it does. Okay, so I know that my calculations are good. Last thing to do is answer the question, list the sides shortest to longest. Now, the shortest side is opposite the smallest angle. That was 42, which was angle C. The opposite side, if I draw an arrow from there, that goes to AB. AB is the shortest. Then, the middle angle was A, 65. So the middle side is BC. That's opposite. And then the biggest angle is 73. That's angle B. So that's opposite the biggest side, which is AC. Now you'll notice my picture did not end up being accurate. That this doesn't look like the biggest angle, 73. Doesn't matter. I'm just drawing a generic triangle just so I can visualize what's happening. Okay, and that's the end of part two.